Hello, YouTube. Um, okay, so the sun is shining into my room. Well, you can see, like, really brightly. So, um, I might turn into a ghost at some point, because the walls in my room are white, and they reflect. Yeah, anyway, so. There may be some technical difficulties, and I may end up looking like a zombie, but that's okay. Um, there's a few things I wanted to talk about today. Um, in my video, which, you know, I do want to make the video, but I feel really quite lethargic, um, because I haven't been, uh, sleeping, yeah, right. I've been feeling quite lethargic, um, over the past sort of week, um, because I've been, you know, I've been having some trouble um, with a couple of things, um, to do with, like, really just getting things done, and it hasn't been happening at the speed that I would like, and it's nothing to do with transition, or medical, or anything, it's just, I've been worrying about money a lot more than I need to, um, because I'm bad at math, but there you go, but that stuff's moving now, but I don't need to talk about that here, um, Transition diary and not pour out your world your problem diary. So I had an appointment with my new GP today, and I really like her. Um, I think often I get on better with female practitioners because they're not the man, they're not this patriarchal, you know, men go to university and become GPs kind of people often. Not always. I've had some terrible female practitioners as well, but this GP was really great. Um, I just got everything out of my bag. I got out like my letter of diagnosis, which I won't get into the politics of being, being diagnosed with a mental disorder, just for being kind. Um, I got out my surgery opinions from the psychs. I got out my blood tests that I need doing, and I got out my testosterone, it was a prescription and stuff, and we just sat and we talked for a little while. Um, I told her where I was at mentally, physically, and all the stuff that's been going on with being assaulted last year, and um, she basically bluntly said, the mental health services in this area are shit. Um, if you can get a London-wide referral from the other psychiatrist that you're seeing, do that. So... <laughs> I think that's the way forward in that respect, which is really, you know, that's the kind of person she is, I guess, just really blunt and straightforward. Um, and I, I said to her about my testosterone, she didn't even question it, she just looked at it and went, okay, cool, that's a prescription, I'll transfer this onto a repeat prescription for you, and when you're coming up to needing some more, you can just come in, request a prescription, it should be ready within two days um, for you every time. And I was like, wow, okay, that's, that's really good. Um, and then we got on to talking about surgery stuff. Um, you know, I said to her what my options were, which was I could either that she could either refer me to the GIC like some GPs would want to do, and I would have to go through the referral process all over again, and then be assessed all over again, and then I would have to um, do the yeah, and I just basically said that we're going to be paying for stuff that doesn't need to be paid for. Like, the fun, like you, you know, what's the point in doing a funding request for that? It's already been done. We'll just have to do another funding request at a later date for the surgery. So she was like, yeah, I completely agree with you. The only thing that she didn't like was having to do an individual funding request because she hates them about as much as everyone else in the world hates them because more often than not, they refused the first time. So, yeah, let's see. Ghost. Sunlight. Suddenly I have no facial features, unless I do this. Ooh, that worked. Okay. So, so that you can see my face, I'm going to shield it from the sunlight until the sun goes in. Um, that looks kind of stupid. But. So, um, we filled out the individual funding request form, and basically, she we filled out the individual funding request form, and we looked at the options that were available for the individual funding request form, and no 
uh, gender or transition surgeries were included in the list. And I thought, well, that's very unusual. Like, very unusual. Um, like, there was, I don't know whether they were included in a part that we didn't know about, that she didn't look at, but the only thing that there was was gynecomastia. There was nothing to do with vaginectomy. There was nothing to do with um, balloplasties, hysterectomies, um, although you probably don't need an individual for me if that's what it strikes me. Um, there was nothing to do with, like, really anything uh, trans-specific. And I kind of want to look into that um, for the area and, and kind of maybe raise it as an issue to the panel. Um, but anyway, so eventually we were like, okay, do you know what? Screw it, let's just fill it in however we think. So we filled it in with um, the condition is gender identity disorder and that the, I just wanted treatment, no assessment, just treatment, and that the treatment was going to be a mastectomy with um, chest reconstruction. And we didn't really include any more information than that other than the letters and a letter saying that actually I want to, yeah, I just, I, I don't want the funding for the surgeon that's included in the letters, I actually want the funding for a local surgeon. They're probably going to refuse it, they tend to do that. Um, and then when they refuse it, we're going to reapply, add in a whole bunch more information, um, because, you know, they'll tell us why they're refusing it, so we'll have something more to work on. And then we can argue against those specific points. So, yeah. And then, you know, she's arranged for me to have blood tests on the 8th, so I'll finally know what my testosterone levels and everything are at after being a year on T. Um, because the last time I actually had blood, I was only... I think I was only three months on T because after that point things got tough. Um, yeah, things got tough. I was due to have um, more blood than six months, but I, I couldn't make that appointment for various reasons um, that I'm not really going to go into here. Maybe eventually, but not right now. Um, so then there was the whole drama with the yeah, I see that I may have gone into it at an earlier date, but I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's where my medical stuff is at, and it's going really well. And who knows what's going to happen. Um, so, other stuff. Um, I also wanted to talk about gender recognition certificates, because I worked out, like, I just, I realized, it dawned on me a couple of days ago, that actually my documents have been changed since February 2010, and we're now on May, almost May, um, it's May Day tomorrow, we're almost on May 2012, and that means that I meet the requirements to apply for a gender recognition certificate and change my birth certificate. Now this this to me is really interesting um, from a point of view of, I remember this time a year ago being so mad that I couldn't apply for a GRC and wanting one so badly, whereas now the only, the only reason I would want a GRC is so that I can access, or so that it's easier to access my benefit claims for benefit office people. And so that, like, I don't mind being out as trans for the benefit office. I, I can easily, like, if they could pull up my information, it just says, this person is trans and was born with this name at the top, just because it says that stuff. I don't mind. I don't care. Like, I'm fine with that. The thing that I'm not fine with is having to be called back two hours later all the time, or three hours later, and everything taking a lot longer to find out. So, I don't know, it's a case of weighing things up. And the big thing that makes me not, not want to get a GRC and to keep my female birth certificate for the rest of my life 
possibly, or for now at least, it's because I am incredibly connected to my femaleness, and I feel almost like taking away the piece of paper that the last piece of piece of paper that ever said that I was female, the official piece of paper that, that points out that I had been female, um, kind of takes away from me identifying as genderqueer and makes that really weird because, sorry, I just got really distracted by a super creepy sound that my computer is making every time I speak. Um, but anyway, I'll try and concentrate through it. Um, so, because I feel so connected to my female name, and the fact that I was born female, and the majority of the time I identify as genderqueer, or transmasculine, or femme in many ways, like all of those things combined in my identity, then I feel that to get a GRC would be, first off, denying my past. I don't want to rewrite my life. I did live as female. And I kind of want people to know that. Um, and I don't want to have all of my documents in mail, as, as mail, or at least, I don't know, I just feel like it takes a big chunk of me and, and throws it away and pretends that it doesn't exist and didn't exist, even though it does exist and did exist, that I was born female, that I do have a cunt, and that I'm always going to have that, and have that history, and I don't know, I feel it's almost like if I, I didn't realize how attached to my birth certificate I was and to my birth name still being written on something until I looked at my birth certificate today when I realized the thing about GRC and for me it would feel getting rid of part of my life that I'm not ready to let go of or that I don't want to let go of and that's a completely valid thing in and of itself. So right now I'm leaning towards not getting one, but feeling like I should get one to make things easier for me. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, a piece of paper isn't super important. You know, it doesn't really erase my past. It doesn't really do all that stuff. But it means that nowhere will ever have to know that I'm trans unless I choose to tell them. And I wonder how easy it would be for my... I wonder how easy it would be for me to disappear and become invisible to myself. Because I know that I do that. I know that often I can't see myself. So I almost feel like a GRC would be taking something away rather than giving me something. So yeah. I think I'm going to end on that because this computer noise is really creeping me out and also I don't know whether my sound is recording properly, so yeah, thanks, bye.